All right, guys, we're a day late, but it's time to take a look at the books coming out on Wednesday, March 9th, so I can tell you what I'm getting. What's up, guys? BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them, all for your viewing pleasure. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back. Uh, on this channel, I talk about comics, so you should subscribe if you like talking about comics too. And this is the latest in a series I like to call What I'm Getting, where I go through the books coming out in the upcoming new comic book day. I tell you what's on my pull list, what's on the chopping block, and what's on the maybe list that I might be making a game day decision on. Uh, there are a lot of books coming out this week, um, including a lot of new number ones. So we're going to get right to it. First, a huge thanks to Ultimate Comics for sponsoring this video. Ultimate Comics is my LCS with four locations in the Raleigh area, including Raleigh, Durham, Cary, and a brand new location inside of Crabtree Valley Mall. Speaking of the mall location, this Saturday, uh, March 12th, from noon until it's over, they are hosting an exclusive signing with Nakia Baris and Catherine Sutherland, aka the Yellow and Pink Rangers from Power Rangers Turbo and Power Rangers Zeo. So really cool stuff going on. Uh, you can go get your Power Rangers memorabilia sign. I don't have a helmet or anything, but I'm probably going to head over there uh, so I can meet some people, mix and mingle, and see the new digs at the Crabtree location. So that's going to be super exciting. Make sure you get there early because I imagine the line might be a little crazy. Uh, but hey, they're right across the street or across the hallway from the food court. So at least you can get a Cinnabon while you wait. But anyway, thanks to Ultimate Comics for sponsoring this video. Now, let's take a look at my pull list because like I said, there are a lot of books out this week and I'm just going to I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it. I'm over budget. And so throughout this list, we're going to be talking about chopping block contenders all the way through so I can try to get back closer to my budget number. So let's start things off with the book that I am most excited for. And this week, that is Naomi season two, issue number one. Now, if you guys have been watching uh, the Hangout, I've been doing little recaps of the Naomi TV show on the CW. And while it started off slow, it's definitely picked up in the last two to three episodes but even with, uh, you know, the action starting to pick up and the show becoming, you know, a lot more enjoyable, in my opinion, the TV show has nothing on the comic. There are so many changes that are made and I'm just like, eh, you know what, let me go back to the comics to get the story that I really want to see continued. So uh, Naomi, written by Brian Michael Bendis with David F. Walker, and it's got art by Jamal Campbell. Jamal Campbell, who you may recognize from Far Sector. Um, and he's been doing variant covers on Nightwing uh, here recently. Uh, but the original series, Naomi season one, I did a full review on. I loved it. I love this character of Naomi, this girl who finds out she has superpowers, finds out she's an alien, but doesn't find out much else. Now, throughout Naomi's adventures in the DC universe, she's recently become a member of the Justice League. Um, and then she's also been on the Young Justice team. So she's been learning little things, little tidbits about herself here and there. Um, but I think in season two, we're going to see a lot more of her coping with her superpowers. How does her family accept her? Um, and what kind of adventures and shenanigans will she get into? Zumbado's making a return. So this should be an exciting series. Um, I assume it's going to last six issues, but I'm not sure. But Naomi's season two, issue number one, that's the book I'm most excited for this week. It's got a cover price of $3.99. And I'm just getting the cover A. Now, since Naomi is a DC Comics release, let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the DC Comics books on my pull list, starting with the Batman Scooby-Doo Mysteries issue number 12. Uh, now, this is the final issue of the 12 issue maxi series, and every issue has been fun. As we can see on this cover, there's a whole lot of Bat family in this issue, and I'm excited about it. This is one of those palette cleanser books that you just read when you want to take a break from all the grit and grime of modern comic books. And it's got a kid-friendly cover price as well of only $2.99. And I'm just going to get the cover A on that. And next up is a book that I'm only keeping for the covers and the legacy. Uh, this is Detective Comics issue 1056. I have checked out of this whole Shadows of the Bat storyline. I tried to stay excited about it. 
I'm no longer excited about it. I'm, it's going to be over soon, though. But anyway, I'm picking up this book. What you're looking at is actually the Libra Mayo cover B. But there is also a cover C. Um, and this is a cover to commemorate the release of the Batman movie. No, I haven't seen Pattinson's Batman yet. Hopefully I'll see it soon. Uh, but I really like this cover. They're doing a lot of the movie homage variants, and I hadn't picked up any of them yet. I might grab this one, but I really love that Libra Mayho cover, the homage to a death in the family. Like there's just, there's a lot to love about that. I don't think you can go wrong unless you buy the cover A, ironically. Uh, but that's got a cover price of $4.99. I'm getting cover B. Next up uh, is a book that honestly might be on the chopping block after this week. This is John Ridley's I Am Batman issue number seven. Now, I've told you guys, ever since issue number three, once we got out of the whole Fear State crossover, this series has kind of taken on a new life. And it's been really good. It's been really good. Uh, we got Jace Fox moving to New York in the last issue. And that was good. We're starting, we're setting a whole new precedent. Um, we're starting to establish who this new Batman is going to be, how he's going to affect the world around him. There's a lot of really exciting threads going through this book. My issue is that the art is inconsistent. So last issue, we had Ken Lashley, who's one of my favorite artists. I love that. And I was excited, like, oh, maybe Ken Lashley is going to be doing the series moving forward. He's not. It was just a fill-in issue. And for issue number seven, we've got artwork by Christian Doucet. I'm assuming it's you say Doucet and not Deuce, but hopefully I'm saying your name right, dude. Um, no knock to him. I've never seen his artwork. So his artwork is going to make or break whether or not I continue pulling this series because if there's one thing I can't stand, it's inconsistent artwork. Uh, but that's got a cover price of $3.99. I'm getting cover A, which is by Ken Lashley. And next up on the DC Comics pull list from DC and Milestone is Icon and Rocket Season 1, Issue Number 6. This is the final book in Icon and Rocket Season 1. And this one has been... To say it's the least favorite out of the Milestone Returns books isn't really saying much because I love the other two books so much. Static Season 1 just wrapped up last week. Hardware Season 1 has been delayed a little bit. I think we're getting issue number 5 uh, here in a couple weeks. But um, with Icon, it's not so much that it's a bad series. It's that it's so much of a departure from what we've seen before. It's kind of taking everything you know about Icon and really turning it on its head. And there's a lot that I, that's just kind of unfamiliar about the character. Once I get out of my head that Icon existed before, it's a little bit easier to swallow. I do like Rocket in this series. Um, I do like the, the voices of a lot of the characters around uh, this series, like just neighborhood characters and stuff like that. Um, but there's something about this series that's just like not quite what I expected. Um, now, one thing that's been really cool or really, really good is the artwork by Doug Braithwaite. And uh, the story that's being told here by Reggie Hudlin and Leon Chills is a very um, far reaching story, right? Icon is a space alien. And so we're getting like space galactic level threats, which is something we're not really used to in the Dakota universe. And that's a pretty welcome change. Uh, so all in all, if you haven't been picking up this series, I recommend perhaps waiting for the hardcover, or if you can find the issues, uh, they are available to read on DC Universe Infinite. So go ahead and take a look at the series, maybe binge issues one through five, and then pick up number six this week as a nice treat. There should be a lot of action in this issue, a whole lot of action. We set up for a final confrontation. It's going to be pretty cool. But anyway, uh, Icon of Rocket number six has a cover price of $3.99, and I'm just getting cover A. And the next book on the DC Comics pull list you know what? This, this is a book that might be on the chopping block. Uh, I mean, with the price tag, it probably should be, but this is the Joker issue number 13. I've kept this book on my pull list as for as long as I have because it was James Tynan writing it. And at the time where this series started, James Tynan was writing Batman. So I thought they were all going to connect a little bit better. Well, James Tynan left Batman like five issues ago. And, um, <sighs> I haven't even been reading these issues of the Joker. You know, when a writer leaves a series and it's no longer what you thought it was going to be, just kind of puts a different taste in your mouth. It's a little bit weird. Uh, but anyway, 
uh, the Joker number 13. This is the second to the last issue of the run. And that might be the only reason I keep it on the pull list because then I can just maybe sell the full set of 14 issues um, and get some of my money back that way. I don't know. I don't know. But the Joker number 13 has got a cover price of $5.99 and I'm getting cover A. And the last book on my DC Comics pull list is Superman, Son of Kal-El, issue number nine. This is one of my favorite titles. It's written by Tom Taylor. Um, and I'm not sure who's doing the art in this issue because it is a Nightwing crossover. Um, but the first issue of the Nightwing crossover, which happened in Nightwing 79, not 79, 89, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I loved that issue. In my opinion, it was the best Superman, Son of Kal-El issue so far. But it was a Nightwing book, uh, but I'm hoping some of the charm from that comes back over here as they conclude the crossover. Um, I really like seeing the relationship between John Kent and Dick Grayson um, and just how awesome it is. It's it's a really nice dynamic. Uh, so Son of kal number nine has a cover price of $3.99 and I'm just getting the cover A. And finally, we've reached the end of my DC Comics pull list. If I just stick to the list, uh, my DC total is going to be $30. Um, if I cut out the Joker number 13, that brings it down to 24. So I don't know, saving money is looking a little bit more enticing, but let's move on to Marvel Comics where the first book on my pull list is The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 92. Um, and this is another book that's on like the list or it could be a chopping block book. The only thing that's saving this series is that the Beyond storyline is finally almost over. We got issue 92. Next week, we got issue 92.bey. And then the week after that, we got issue 93. And that concludes this volume of Spider-Man before they reboot it with John Romita Jr. next month. So I've invested so much time into the Beyond story. I'm, but like, I feel like the ending is kind of predictable and I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I should just see it through, but this whole weekly thing for like four months was so unnecessary. It just did not need to be this long. Amazing Spider-Man issue 92. Uh, it's got a cover price of $3.99. And if I buy it, I'm just getting cover A. Next up is Devil's Reign issue number five. Devil's Reign from Chip Zdarsky, Marco Cicchetto. Some of my favorite art at Marvel Comics right now. Really, really good. I think it's definitely the best art outside of like the X-Men office. Um, but Devil's Reign has been really cool. It's basically like, I don't know, a pseudo Civil War type book. Um, we're getting all sorts of uh, villains fighting against the heroes um, on behalf of Kingpin. And, you know, we got to bring that to a head. Uh, we got Luke Cage running for mayor. There's a lot of cool stuff going on and i'm excited to see how this wraps up there's only two issues left including this one and it's got a cover price of 4.99 i'm getting the cover a and next up from marvel comics is a brand new number one that i'm very excited to try this is the punisher the punisher number one by jason aaron um, now in this whole punisher series it's definitely come with this controversy because in the preview images we saw that the Punisher's logo is changing because he's going to be helping out with the hand. He's going to be leading the hand somehow. I think that's an interesting storyline. As you can see from this cover right here, the logo still the same so far. So I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like people are going to hype this issue up because it's the first appearance of this new costume. And um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I've never read a Punisher book. Um, even though I do have a Punisher by Garth Ennis omnibus that I need to crack open once. But I like the idea of, you know, a ruthless anti-hero, right? As if we don't get enough dark and brooding with Batman. Um, but I'm excited to get into a Punisher storyline for the first time that does not include Eminem, because that's the only other Punisher book I've ever read. Um, anyway, Punisher number one has a cover price of $5.99. Good Lord, Marvel. Not making it easy for these new number ones. Um, but yeah, I'm getting cover A. There are a lot of covers. The only other cover I'm really interested in is the Alex Ross Timeless variant, but I'm probably going to let that sit on the shelf too. Um, now the next up is another book that's a chopping block contender, and this is Sabretooth issue number two. 
Now, I was really excited about the whole Sabretooth series because what I thought was happening was Sabretooth was like breaking out of jail and wreaking havoc on Krakoa. And perhaps that's how this series ends, but it's definitely not how it started. And I'm just, there's too many books on my list already. Like there's too many books. You see that stack behind me? I got a lot to read. So I might have to just drop this, save some money in the budget and, you know, check it out digitally on Marvel Unlimited in three months because, hey, why not? Um, but Sabretooth number two has a cover price of $3.99. And if I grab it, I'm going to get the cover A. Uh, next up on the Marvel Comics pull list is Strange Academy issue number 17. Strange Academy, uh, written by Scotty Young, artwork by Umberto Ramos, has been really cool. I haven't read the whole series. I've read about the first 10 issues. Really enjoying it so far. I was going to drop this a while back, but I decided not to because when they collect this series, they don't collect it in standard size trades or even oversized hardcovers. They've been collecting it in these digest size trades made more so for children. And I just think this Ramos artwork deserves to be enjoyed in a larger format. So I'm definitely going to keep picking up this series for, uh, and also this is issue number 17 is the penultimate issue, meaning issue 18 is when the series is going to end. So I'll have a full run of Strange Academy and I'm excited because once it ends, I'll have more room on the pull list for something else or to save, you know, $4 a month. Uh, but that's got a cover price of $3.99. I'm getting cover A. Next up uh, on the pull list is Venom, issue number six. I can't even lie. I haven't been as excited about this series as I was about Donny Cates' run. And I think that was to be expected. I will say this series has been kind of uh, divided up between uh, Al Ewing and Ram V. And when Ram V's doing the issues and when it's focused on Dylan Brock, it's really good. And I really like it, which means issue six should be really good because Ram V's doing issue six and it's a Dylan Brock storyline. It's Dylan Brock and a whole bunch of symbiotes. So this should be really good. I just don't know how long I can take the up and down nature of Venom uh, because the cosmic stuff really does kind of force me to check out. Uh, but for now, Venom number six is safe on the pull list. It's got a cover price of $3.99. I'm getting cover A. And um, thanks to some delays, we're getting these next two issues on the same day, which I think is crazy. But anyway, let's get started with the 10 deaths or the X deaths of Wolverine issue number four. I've been loving the X deaths side of this whole series. I read issue one of the 10 lives or X lives of Wolverine. And I liked it, though I was slightly confused and I misplaced my issue number two. So I've been on a, in a holding pattern for the last two issues of 10 Lives of Wolverine. Um, eventually, I'm going to read the whole series. But in the meantime, I've only been reading 10 Deaths or X Deaths. And I'm loving the Moira McTaggart Enemy of the State saga. I'm loving this appearance of Omega Wolverine. And there were some revelations in the last issue. So two weeks ago, uh, their issue of X deaths that was like, hmm, pretty interesting story. Uh, so I'm excited to see just how that all plays out. We've only got three issues left, including this one. Um, but if you're going to get X deaths of Wolverine, which by the way, has a cover price of $4.99, uh, and I'm getting cover A, but if you're going to get X Deaths with Wolverine, you got to make sure you get this one first. This is X Lives or 10 Lives of Wolverine, issue number four. And this comes before 10 Deaths in the reading order. Uh, this was supposed to be out last week, but due to what I'm assuming was like a printing delay, they both came out the same week. Uh, so like I said, 10 Lives of Wolverine, I can't tell you, I can't speak to how good the story is, uh, but I will say the other half of the series is pretty good. And Benjamin Percy's writing them both. So I would imagine... X Lives is pretty good. I just got to find my issue too so I can get caught up with you guys. Um, but anyway, make sure you read this before you read 10 Deaths. It's got a cover price of $4.99. I'm getting cover A. And that's going to do it for my Marvel Comics pull list. If I just stick to the list, uh, my Marvel Comics are going to cost me $37 this week. Um, but I might be making some cuts to uh, make that a little bit less. Now, let's get to the independent the creator-owned comics for the week, uh, starting 
with a brand new title from Image. This is Radiant Red issue number one. Uh, now, Radiant Red is a spinoff from Radiant Black. Radiant Red was the first other Radiant character that we met way back in issue number one of Radiant Black. Um, and then we found out a little bit later on the origin of Radiant Red, and she was just somebody who, well, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read it, but we got a reason for her being a villain. Uh, we got something for, to be sympathetic about, um, and we've kind of been watching her actions throughout the whole Radiant Black series. This is the first in a series of like new Radiant Universe titles, and that's excited or that's exciting. Um, and I'm loving the connected universe, but in the last two weeks, there have been like two different crossovers, uh, in this whole radiant universe. And I'm not caught up on either of them. And that leads me to believe maybe I should just trade weight for this series or even pick it up digitally. So this is honestly, it's on the maybe list. I might not even pick it up. Uh, but if I do, it's got a cover price of $3.99 and I would get the cover A. Next up is a series that I'm sad to find out is ending soon. That is Seven Secrets, issue number 15. Seven Secrets, written by Tom Taylor, art by Danielle Dinaculo. I've really been enjoying it. I love the spy and mystery vibe. The action in the series is good. Um, I always love like a good heartfelt story, and this has that as well. Um, I'm a little bit behind on this series, but it's ending with issue 18. So you already know I got to I got to see it through. I got to see it through in the single issues and I expect the series to end with a bang. So I expect this issue to be good and I expect the next 3 issues to be good as well before we finally get the end or the conclusion of this series. Uh 7 Secrets number 15 has got a cover price of 3.99. I'm getting cover A. And the last book on my indie comics pull list um, is Spawn, issue 327. You guys already know, right? I tell you this every two, three weeks or so, but I pick up Spawn strictly for the artwork. I've been picking up Spawn. If this is issue 327, that means this is the 28th issue of Spawn that I would have picked up in a row. That's like two years and four months or six months worth of Spawn. And uh, I got to tell you, man, Man, I, why would you pick up a book for two years and not read it? I'm I'm guilty. It's me. I'm the culprit. So this book, even though it's got two really great covers this week, we got this cover A uh, by Berenz, if I'm not mistaken, and then we got a cover B by Todd McFarlane himself, homaging Spider-Man number one from like 92. I mean, those are two good reasons to buy the book, the covers themselves, but... I just don't know if I can keep justifying spending this money, especially in a week where I'm over budget. So not picking up this book would save me $2.99. But if I did pick up the book, I'd probably get cover A, even though I love McFarlane homage covers. But that cover A is just a really good cover. So so that's Spawn. It's on the chopping block this week. But um, if I bought all the books on my pull list this week, on my indie pull list this week, I'd be spending $11, uh, which brings my grand total. If I don't cut any of the books that I mentioned, if I uh, buy everything on this list, my grand total will be $78. If I cut out everything um, that I said I might cut out, including the Joker issue 13, well, that would bring my total back down to $59 before taxes and my subscriber discount. So honestly, that might be the move. Um, but the rule is if I can't get under budget by cutting books out, that means I just got to sell something from the personal collection, which is fine. I got a bunch of trade paperbacks I can, I can let go of. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff taking up space that I don't need anymore. So I'm confident that I'll make up the money if I do spend this, but I don't know. We're going to look at the next few weeks and see if uh, it's time to bring out the hatchet again. But anyway, what's on your pull list this week? Are there any titles that you're giving a shot? Any new books that you're looking forward to? Um, anything on my list that you gave up on long ago? Let me know in the comments down below. 
And if you want to talk comics with us a lot more often, you got to join the K-Squad. Um, it's my private community of comic book fans. We've got a community on Facebook and a community on Discord. So join whichever one you're most comfortable with. And don't forget to check out the full list of this week's releases at comicsaredope.com. I'll see you there. Until then, I hope you saw something you liked in this video. If not, hey, that's cool. You can always buy what you like. Just make sure you read what you buy. And be nice to others, because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.